In today's video, we're having a look at the impact of patch 13.6 a week later, seeing how those champions changed got affected, the winners, the losers, and everything in between. And as always, we're going to start off in the top lane. In the god tier, surprise, surprise, we still have Olaf. And in the S tier, there's a ton of choice. Malphite, Shen, Camille, Jax, Fiora, Rengar, Kled, Akshan, Pantheon, Singed, Darius, and Riven. Yes, Riven is back up to the S tier this week after proving just how strong she actually is. Riven has not exactly been weak since her buffs back in patch 13.4, and finally people are realising she's good enough to be up there with the big guns. Riven has all the tools she needs to destroy certain lanes and carry her way to victory in those side lanes too. She has tons of different ways to combo her abilities together to keep herself unpredictable, and her burst can be insanely surprising, and more than enough to outplay all sorts of matchups and some junglers too. If you want to see some more info and advice about Riven, then click the link in the description and head to our desktop app to get builds, runes, combos, tips and tricks, matchup advice, and just so much more. Another champion in that top lane proving his worth in the S tier is Shen, and he's definitely one of the more consistent top laners you can go for across pretty much every single rank. And if you're duo queue with anyone else on the map, there's not many better to go for. Shen has and will always be viable just because of the sheer strength and influence his ultimate offers. Its global shield and teleport actually allow you to influence the rest of the map rather than just sitting there butting heads with the enemy top laner. And if you manage to pop it at the right time multiple times in a game, it's going to be really hard for you to not actually have more impact than the enemy top laner. All you really got to do is understand how to trade and lane with him, understand when and why to press your ultimate, and know how to flash taunt, and you're good to go. We just can't stress enough how much people are still sleeping on Singed. I don't know if people just don't enjoy him or they don't realise how broken he is, but his win rate speaks for itself. It's been this high all season with a few little dips and troughs here along the way, but if you haven't tried Singed yet, you're seriously missing out. Pop your ultimate, pop that ghost, charge towards the enemy AD carry, fling them into your team and win the fight. It's as simple as that. And by the way, you're going to have a ton of fun along the way as well. Just remember to spam that laugh emote. Over to the jungle now. In the god tier, we have Jarvan, and in the S tier, we have Lee Sin, Wukong, Master Yi, Kane, Kindred, Fiddle, Udyr, Echo, Evelyn, and Rengar. Yes, Echo is also back up to the S tier now, after plenty of his horrible jungle matchups slowly get nerfed. Echo has never really been weak, he's always been viable, but he did get overshadowed for a while. Well, now he's back to his best. Echo has so much to offer, he's not bad at clearing the jungle, he's not bad at ganking, but he scales and snowballs incredibly well. Now you can play Echo like an initiator with that massive stun zone, or you can play him like an assassin, and if you get fed, you're going to one-shot those support squishy mid laners and AD carries in seconds. Jump in with your E plus your Proto Belt plus your Flash plus your Q, one shot them down with your passive, and then just dolt back out to safety. If your enemies don't have too much consistent and reliable CC to lock you out of your ultimate, then you can be insanely hard to deal with. So give it a go if you have forgotten about him recently. Rengar is also back to being one of the scariest junglers and top laners in the game. His win rate in both roles is seriously impressive, and as long as you actually know what you're doing, the ceiling this champion has is insane. If Rengar gets fed, there's just nothing more terrifying than his ultimate being popped, those eyes on your screen, and he dives on top of you and one-shots you before you even have a chance to flash. And if you're not near any teammates, there's no chance of any escape. Rengar snowballs and destroys games like no other. And if the draft is perfectly set up for you, there's nothing your enemies can do. If you're good enough at Rengar, you get a few kills in the early game, and you know how to abuse your lead. GG well played. Kane is also another brilliant pick in the jungle again. And after his buffs back in patch 13.3 and his other jungle matchups get nerfed, he's starting to get back to that Kane that we all remember. Now, whether you play Blue Kane or Red Kane, whether you play Gore Drinker, whether you play Prowler's Claw or even Eclipse, there's so many different ways to actually itemize and build him and play him with his different playstyles. So, whether you're that tanky frontline bruiser disrupting fights, whether you're the assassin zooming around the map and one shotting squishies, this champion can be immense in the right games. So, if you haven't really played him for a while, now's a good time to pick him up again. Moving into the mid lane now, and in the god tier we have Annie and Olivia, and in the S tier we have Vladimir, Cassiopeia, Tristana, Rumble, Pantheon, Akshan, Echo, and Kiana. We still have LeBlanc in the B tier due to her underwhelming win rate, but she's definitely one to watch out for, especially so at higher ranks. Aurelian Soul's nerfs definitely hit him harder than we expected. He's been nerfed before and it didn't make that much difference, but this time it's definitely brought him down a notch. Aurelian Soul's win rate dropped down by around 2.5%, which is fairly significant, and that's why this week we brought him down to the A tier. Now he still can be very scary when he gets to the late game, but he's just not winning quite as many games as early on now. Aurelian Soul's ban rate is still exceptionally high though, so people haven't forgotten about the trauma they experienced in the previous patches. Talon was one of the mid laners that got buffed last week, and we have brought him down to the A tier too. Now we thought he'd be a little bit better than he was, so we put him up to the S tier. But in actual fact, they didn't make as much difference as we'd expected. Talon is still more than viable, he's a great pick in the right games, but he just has a few too many difficult matchups to be more than A tier at the moment. He still has insane burst damage, he has amazing amazing snowball potential and unrivaled map mobility with that E. So if you do enjoy playing Talon, you're good enough on him, you know what you're doing, you know how to carry, you know how to 1v9, then keep playing him. 
Another mid laner that got buffed last week was Galio, and he saw a win rate of nearly 1% increase. Galio is a crowd control machine in that mid lane. He's fantastic at setting up ganks, but he's also got amazing roaming potential with that ultima too. Galio's win rate is around about 52.25%, which is seriously impressive for someone in the A tier. But he's a bit too situational to be put into the S tier just yet. Galio has insane synergies with some champions like Fiddlesticks' ultima, Camille's ultima, and engaging initiators he just complements so well. So if you do get the game where Galio looks perfect, then now's the best time to play him because still, no one's really banning him, not too many people are picking him either, and he's a great choice to go for. Moving down to the bot lane then, and let's take a look at those AD carries first. In the S tier, we have Jinx, Zeri, Jin, Zaya, and Twitch. Ash is slowly getting back to her best again. She got nerfed a bit too hard for support, now they gave her some buffs as an AD carry to her passive, and honestly, she's actually really much better than people realise. It has been a while since we've seen Ash spammed a lot in the AD carry role. So many other picks have been better, she's too easy to shut down, and she never really gets to that point where she scales and slaps. But this patch is showing otherwise. The buff to her passive saw her rise in win rate by around 1.7%. And now, honestly, we nearly put her in the S tier. Ash has crazy slows, good poke, fantastic scaling, and of course, that amazing utility and CC ability in her ultimate. And there's so many fantastic picks you could play her alongside, like Melio, for example. If you haven't tried Ash yet since these changes, here's a reminder to give her a go. Vayne also got some buffs last week. They increased her movement speed from her passive, they increased her Q, and slightly nerfed her W. And Vayne's win rate increased by around 1.1%. Now, whether you build her with a Kraken Slayer or a Shield Bow, she's still going down the Gwynsu's Rage Blade Blade of the Rune King route. But either way, she's having a lot of success this patch. You can also play Vayne top with these changes too. Just remember though, it's not quite as easy because you don't have the protection from your support. Vayne still isn't necessarily the strongest in the early game though, so still be a little bit careful in the late phase. But as you get that mythic item completed, as you get into the mid game with those pass spikes, remember that you are still Vayne. You can kite, you can self peel, you can dash around in stealth and have a lot of fun whilst doing it. Vigar also got some nerfs this week and it's safe to say he was a little bit broken. But the truth is, these nerfs haven't actually made that much difference to his bot lane performance. Vigar is still incredibly strong in that AD carry position. He has great CC, he has fantastic scaling, he has solid damage throughout all stages of the game, and if you didn't know already, he also tears through towers as well. Having a Vigar in the bot lane, especially if you have a CC heavy support, just means you have so much to offer when it comes to those early dragon fights. And usually you have more than enough utility, CC, and damage to provide for your jungler and mid lane to clean them up. If your support wants to roam, that's no problem because Vyagar can just farm up, prevent any dives with his cage, and get ready to scale into that late game. Now, he did take a little bit of a hit in both mid and AD carry this week with those nerfs, but he's still a great pick. Finally, let's take a look at those supports then, and in the S tier, we have Senna, Rakan, Blitzcrank, Thresh, Annie, Pike, and Nautilus. We've also added the newest champion, Melio, to the A tier. Yes, the new support has been a fantastic release so far, and he's actually been a little bit broken, which is why he's already had some nerfs. The shields, the healing, the extra range, the CC, the passive burn damage, and of course, that big cleansing ultimate. This champion really does have a lot to offer. He's also very easy to play, and if you ask me, I think he should probably be a little bit squishier. Now, it's always hit and miss when new champions hit the rift. Sometimes they're really weak, sometimes they're completely broken. And Melio was definitely on the strong side. Well, we would put him in the S tier, but since these nerfs, we've placed him in the A tier for now. And let's see how he looks over the next few weeks. After Yumi's mini rework a few patches ago, she was a little bit broken. But after the nerfs this week, she's lost 3.5% of her win rate. Yes, Riot have gutted her yet again, and the champion that proves impossible to balance is just living up to this statement every single time she gets changed. Yumi just has too much to offer when she's strong, and she's also just not punishing enough to play. So when she she is viable, she's usually more than viable, she's usually a bit too strong. Right now, she's definitely a little bit underwhelming, and that's why she's in the B tier. So let's see if there's any changes that are going to come her way over the next few weeks. Finally, we just have to talk about Thresh, who's having the season of his life. He got a series of buffs in patch 13.3 and 13.4, and it's safe to say they've sent him over the edge. Thresh is back to his winning ways like he was back in the days when he was released. And his utility, his damage, his scaling, his versatility are all making him one of the best supports in the game. There is nothing more satisfying than having a clean game on Thresh, landing every hook, clutching every lantern, timing those flays perfectly, and locking down enemies in the box. And honestly, there's probably never been a better time to be a Thresh one trick. So if you do main support and you haven't played Thresh yet since all these buffs and changes, why not? And on that note, that's going to bring us to the end of our patch 13.6 updated tier list video. Before you go, feel free to subscribe if you enjoy our content and check out our Mobilitics desktop app by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching as always guys, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care.